Short. Tip. No. And Miami has won. The biggest victory since they brought basketball back six years ago. And tonight, Leonard Hamilton doesn't have to fake it. He's made it. For winning the first game in the, in the Big East Conference, a tremendous boost to our program. Uh, gave our youngsters something to be very proud of, gave our fans an opportunity to generate some enthusiasm and help in, improve our attendance. As far as preparing for the rest of the season, I'm sure that our kids now will go into each game feeling that we have a chance to win basketball games. Welcome everyone to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and tonight inside sold out Fitzgerald Fieldhouse on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh, the Panthers play host to the Miami Hurricanes. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough, along with Lynn Elmore. It's nice to have you with us tonight. It has certainly been an interesting first season in the Big East for Miami, but still just the one win in league play, the upset against St. John's at home, and they're a big underdog tonight. It's been three years since we've seen Miami on ESPN. Len, what do we need to know about this team? Well, certainly we know that Miami is a bunch of hardworking overachievers, and they're led by a guy by the name of Leonard Hamilton, who's had a reputation of being a great recruiter at Kentucky and a recruiter and coach at Oklahoma. State. In fact, Leonard gets a lot of credit for assembling the team that's the number three team in the country right now. But they do have enough talent where they can put some minutes together and they can beat somebody on some given night. The Hurricanes have lost three in a row. Pittsburgh got off to a great start this year. Upset wins over Kentucky and Texas, but they've struggled of late. They have dropped four in a row. Let's talk about the problems lately for Paul Evans. Earlier in the season, great motion in the box. Has that been the case lately? Well, to get some offensive and defensive rebounds, not. How about proper floor spacing? Well, that's going to get you some uncontested shots, three-pointers. Not. And free throw shooting? Free throw shooting to win ball games down the stretch? Not. And have these two teams played lately? Not. It's the first meeting between these two schools since 1969-70 season. Pitt and Miami will have the starting lineups from the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse right after this. Many questions are being asked about hair loss. Mine were answered by this booklet. It's free and it's put together by the Hair Replacement Centers. And to help you get it, they'll even give you this 800 number. Now with this free call, you can find out why their non-surgical individual strand application works. Looking natural is something I depend on. So for me, the Hair Replacement Centers is the natural choice. Call Hair Replacement Centers now for your free informative booklet, 1-800-572-INFO. TWA introduces low business flyer fares for business travelers who are really serious about saving money. Fly coast to coast with these low TWA fares on first class, business class, or coach. Or connect to 60 cities through TWA's convenient St. Louis hub. You can also take advantage of TWA's low business flyer fares to Europe. All fares are refundable without the usual penalties and restrictions. For reservations, call your travel agent or TWA at 1-800-221-2000. Welcome back to Fitzgerald Fieldhouse on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. The Panthers play some of their games in this on-campus facility and some at the Pittsburgh Civic Arena downtown. Despite the struggles of both teams lately, we do have a sellout here tonight. And the starting lineup for the Hurricanes of Miami, who come in at 6-12 and 12 overall and 1-7 and seven in the league play, Jerome Scott is their leading scorer. Well, he's a guy who was a two-guard, but who's moved to the point. And what's that, what that's given Miami is a guy at the point capable of distributing the ball nicely, but also putting some points on the board, and they certainly need that. And the starting lineup for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Darren Morningstar, a 50-year senior, has had an incredible season. Well, if two years ago when I saw Darren Morningstar, you would have told me he would lead this team in scoring and be a fourth. You know, I'd have been awfully surprised. But he's a very hard worker, a guy who dedicated this summer to getting in shape. Lost about 20 pounds, and he's come back this year with a vengeance. Very mature player at this time. Paul Evans in his sixth season as head coach at the University of Pittsburgh. And Leonard Hamilton brings the Miami Hurricanes to the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse for the first time. Leonard in his second season as head coach at the University of Miami. 
This series dates back to 1947. Miami has won the last five, but as we mentioned at the outset, they haven't played each other since the 1969-70 season, and Pittsburgh's last win was way back in 1958. They'll become a lot more familiar with each other now that Miami is a member of the Big East. Jody Sylvester to throw the ball in the air. He's joined by Joe Mengel and Roger Paramore as our officials tonight, and we're underway. Miami in the visiting Orange controls. Michael Gardner is number 12. It's a three-guard starting lineup for Leonard Hamilton. Hammy Ward is 23, Gardner 12, and Jerome Scott the leading scorer, 44. As we mentioned, Miami looks like they want to be deliberate, running time off the clock. We're approaching 20 seconds on the shot clock. And Scott takes an open two. He missed, and the rebound down to McNeil, and he was fouled. Fouled by Hammy Ward, the junior from Houston, Texas. Well, Chris McNeil is the guy that Paul Evans for Pitt really wants to get started in the paint particularly. He's the leading rebounder on the team. Lately, though, he hasn't really shown it. He's only had uh, 16 rebounds in his last three games. He's got to get more active. Orlando Antigua, freshman number 44. This is Morningstar. Whistled away from the ball. Sean Miller was being held by Michael Gardner. First personal against the freshman Gardner. And two quick fouls within 47 seconds against Miami. Well, that's a matchup we're going to have to watch Gardner on Miller because Sean Miller is the key to this pit team. He's the floor leader, great passer, and certainly knows the game. He gets them started. Morningstar picked it out to Miller. Antigua takes a three, and Pitt has a 3 nothing lead. Proper spacing. If that was a concern, Pitt's come out right now, swung the ball around the horn with good spacing. Gandhi Jordan batted the ball away from Jake Morton, number 13. And again, the floor spacing with the intended would appear to run some time off the clock. Now Morton shoots with 23 seconds left of the clock, but he was fouled. Gandhi Jordan whistled for the foul, the first against the Panthers. Well, against the pit man to man, Miami looks to get a lot of continuity, set double screens and try, try to free their shooters up. But more importantly, they want movement. They want to have that pit defense shift from side to side until such time that they find an opening and they'll attack the basket. Jake Morton sat out all of last year after suffering a fractured left kneecap in a preseason exhibition game. And they started calling him coach. He logged a lot of time on the bench, assisting the Miami coaching staff. Morton's a junior from Bowie, Maryland, out of the fine Gonzaga High School program in Washington D.C. Two misses and the rebound was Morningstar. This is Miller. Now Jordan. Morningstar scores and it's 5 nothing Pitt. And if you notice Darren Morningstar didn't get off the ground very high but good pump fakes and a nice touch as well as the positioning got him open. And a traveling call against Anthony Lawrence who just joined the Miami team at the start of the new semester. Take a look at Darren Morningstar with his up-to-date look. He's a guy that has worked awfully hard to be where he is right now. Worked awfully hard on those sideburns, too. <laughs> Five nothing Pittsburgh. We're approaching two minutes play here in Pittsburgh and the steal by Jerome Scott. Gardner for three. And it's 5-3, Panthers. Well, so much for a deliberate attack. Miami moves it. If they get the open shot, we see that they're going to take it. McNeil, nice look to Morningstar for the easy two. Morningstar is a senior from Stevenson, Washington. Constantine Popo getting ready to check in for Miami. Basket will not count as Anthony Lawrence is called for traveling. Well, Anthony Lawrence is still somewhat raw offensively, but the guy really goes to the board strong. That was an excellent move by him, a shuffle of the feet, but you need those pump fakes underneath. That's what's going to get you open if you're a big guy. 
And as we mentioned, Popa has checked in. He is big number 33 in the middle for Miami. Seven feet three, the tallest player ever play for the Hurricanes. Miami right now in a trapping zone to leave Popa in the middle to block shots. Morning star again. He has six of the nine Panther points. And Morningstar wanted to test Popa right away. The reason Popa got in at this point was because Morningstar was having his way in the paint. Jerome Scott, senior from Herndon, Virginia. He's the youngest of 11 children. Again, down to 20 on the shot clock as the whistle sounds away from the ball. And it's going against Morningstar as he collided with Constantine Popa. Well, certainly, Constantine Popa is going to have to recognize that in the Big East Conference, there's a lot of physical play. You look at that body and you wonder if he can withstand a season's worth. Certainly, Darren, Darren Morningstar is the type of guy who will lay some body on you. Five second call against Miami. The Hurricanes trim it over again. Star. Double team, gave it to McNeil. The left hander is good. Well, against that type of zone pressure, spacing is very important because you force a defender to play two people and pitch running into perfection, getting open people cutting down the lane. Leonard Hamilton started a signal for a timeout, then realized that the TV timeout is coming up in a matter of seconds. Out of bounds off Gandhi Jordan. It'll be Miami ball. See, this is where Miami needs that guy you can go to when you're in a lull or you're in a bad space to go to to get you some points and kind of help bring the team out of the doldrums. And they don't really have anyone on the team capable of doing that. This is a team of complementary players more than having that one or two stars. Anthony Lawrence has returned to the Miami lineup for Hammy Ward. Hopa gave it up to Lawrence. Hopa needs to get out of the lane. He's in there for a while. on the shot clock as Lawrence tries a three. Rebound Jordan batted away by Lawrence and Jordan got it back to Miller. Miller to McNeil. Offensive foul called against Sean Miller. Certainly don't see that happen very often. Sean Miller, a great assist turnover ratio. First foul against Miller. An eight-point lead for Paul Evans and the Pittsburgh Panthers. Hey, Billy, this is Susan. How about a lift to the beach today? Hi, Bill. Paula here. Do you have time to help me move? Bye. Bill, it's Kathleen. Can you help me at the gallery this afternoon? William, it's Michelle, your girlfriend. Remember the one you were supposed to pick up an hour ago? The 1992 Toyota Standard Bed Truck. Affordable, and you can depend on it. Good. You want Bud Light, the clean, fresh taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. You can taste it, you can feel it, you know you better off. Cause everything else is just a light. Keep your Bud Light shining. Everything else is just a light. You gotta shine on. Everything else is just a light. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. A recent Department of Energy study reveals that most American homes are under-insulated. And that means you. To find out what's right for your home, call Owens Corning at 1-800-GET-PINK. We talked about good spacing and how Pitt needs it to get some open shots. Watch Chris McNeil, number 24, in the white shirt. Just wait till his moment and then cut right down the lane. Look at the space between he and Darren Morningstar. A lot of ground for that zone to cover. 11-3 Pitt with 15.45 to play. Popo had it intercepted by McNeil. Anthony Lawrence was behind McNeil, but the pass wasn't long enough. And Jordan really made it hurt by burying a three, his first points of the night. 
And Pitt right now is perfect from the field, six for six. And the reason they're doing it is excellent ball movement and finding open people cutting or setting up for the jumper, something that Paul Evans emphasized in practice yesterday. Well, it seems to me that Miami really hasn't decided yet as Popa's hook drops in whether or not it wants to be deliberate and spread it out in the half court here or if it wants to push the tempo. We've seen a little bit of each. Jordan missed a three. Rebound Michael Gardner. I think you can forget about the deliberate play maybe at least until if and until Miami gets the lead. Right now these players are hungry. Jake Morton gave it to Michael Gardner. They're on the floor. In the backcourt for Miami. Gardner missed. Lawrence tipped it. He's in the front court with Pompa. And Scott is also in there. Another three guard lineup for Leonard Hamilton. Miller for three. No surprise that he made it. Well, lately, though, he hasn't been looking for that shot. And yesterday, once again, in practice, they worked on getting Sean Miller open, and Paul Evans and the rest of the coaching staff kept urging him to shoot the ball. Five points tonight for Sean Miller. Jerome Scott. Had it deflect to Lawrence. Over Morningstar too strong. And Morningstar wound up with it. So I think Miami is almost over anxious because they come out here against Pitt and they believe that they can play with these guys. And when a team believes that, they sometimes play outside of themselves, rush things. Especially an overachieving team like Miami. McNeil missed a three. Scott the rebound. Jake Morton, 4-3. Rebound McNeil. You got to take shots like that if you're wide open. Miller trying to lob it into Jordan. It was knocked away, but the Panthers keep it. They lead 17-5. We're down to 13 and a half minutes to play in the first half. Getting all kinds of uncontested easy shots. McNeil missed that short one. And the foul on the rebound activity going against Pittsburgh's Gandhi Jordan. Now's on white for his second. Let me remind you, individual players are allowed six fouls in Big East play. Looking at Jim Kaiserman, a senior from Abington, Pennsylvania, who has checked in. Sean, I'll tell you where the um, indecision is on Miami's side, and that's on the defensive end. You know, once they come down on the other end, we got to watch and see if they want to go out and guard people or they want to step back and pack the zone in. They're caught in between. Scott guarded very tightly by Ned Sharif, who has checked in, wearing number 13 for Pitt. Also in for the Panthers, number 40, Chris Gant. 15 on the shot clock as Kaiserman fed Scott. And the leading scorer for the Hurricanes has two. He's the leading scorer coming into this game for Miami, averaging just 11 points per game. He's the only Hurricane averaging in double figures for the season. They also distribute uh, the minutes among a lot of players. They've got uh, at least eight players playing double figures in minutes. 17-7, Pittsburgh. 12-25 to play in the first half. Chris Gant, the freshman from Houston, scores. Once again, Pitt doing it inside, moving the ball, forcing the zone to come out, and then dropping it down. Scott with a chance to be a 1,000-point career score in Miami. Came in tonight with 873. He's a senior. That shot is knocked down by O'Keel Swaby, his first shot of the night. The freshman, highly recruited from Miami. Now we take a look at the zone. Miami willing to go far out on the wings to contest. Sean Miller went far out for that three. Missed, but Morningstar with help from Antigua kept it alive. Again, Miller underneath. Gant had it blocked by Popa. 39th block shot of the season for Constantine Popa. Now Scott, strong drive along the baseline. It didn't drop, but he did draw a foul. And that's what I mean by believing you can play with guys. Jerome Scott, if they were in that deliberate uh, 
stances there. They would have backed it out and started all over again. But Stock feeling he can take somebody. Did just that. You see, he looked like though he wanted to go back outside and start it up, but he recognized, hey, I got a guy who's not going to guard me. Let me take it to the basket. Looked like most of the contact was with Morningstar, but they called the foul against Sharif. His first. These are the two worst free throw shooting teams in the Big East. Miami is a team at 63.7 percent for the season. Scott a little bit better than that at 66.2. We remind you the Davis Cup action returns to ESPN. USA versus Argentina. First round action from Hawaii begins Friday at 4 p.m. live here on ESPN. Quietly, Miami stabilizing itself. They now trail by eight. Larry Bird was born to be a champion. He was destined for glory in the game he loved. Unbelievable! Call this toll-free number now and get Bird watching at its best in this amazing video, Larry Bird, a basketball legend. It's free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated, the best way to capture all the drama of sports. Through rare footage, you'll follow Larry from the basketball courts of Indiana to the hallowed halls of the Boston Garden. Anderson. Be there when the championships are won. Share the glory, live the moments. Be there for the hard fought and emotional duels with Larry's longtime friend and rival, Magic Johnson. Call now to subscribe or renew. Get your free video and 54 issues of SI, including the swimsuit issue for only $1.29 an issue. Save over 55% off the cover price. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. Don't miss this heartwarming tale of a boy who lived his dreams. It's the story of a legend. The legend lives in Sports Illustrated. Call now. I mean, what was I supposed to say? Can I test drive the red one? If you've never talked to a Mercedes dealer, you've probably got a lot of questions. And anyway, I didn't have time to get over there. So I said, I'll bring it over, the red 190, right to your office. Yeah, well. But the question that's the hardest to ask. I mean. <laughs> it's often the easiest to answer. Could I afford it? Bottom line, the new 190 is 29850. That's it? This red one? Yep. And answering your questions, that's free. We talk about good spacing for Pitt. Watch this guy right here, Chris Gant, and watch the spacing along this side. You see the defender on the wing, and Gant has plenty of room to operate. Popa doesn't step up, and that's what they've been doing pretty much all evening against that Miami zone, getting good spacing, and the Miami defenders aren't stepping up and contesting the position. 7-4, to four, the advantage for Pittsburgh on the boards. On the scoreboard, the advantage is eight points as the Panthers lead 19-11. to 11. Jermaine Morgan is checked in for Pitt wearing number 42. That's Morgan, sophomore from Jeanette, PA. Nice pass to Sharif. He was bumped before the shot by Hammy Ward, who picks up his second. Well, that time, first of all, Miami came out in a much tighter zone. Okay, they were able to cover better ground, but hands weren't up on the passes. Consequently, Pitt throws a cross-court pass or a diagonal pass. Leonard Hamilton, 15 and 31 in his two seasons at Miami. He has Constantine Popa back in the minor. See how much tighter the zone is right now? The guys at the top are now at the free throw line rather than hanging out near the top of the key. Morgan, the morning star. They're up front with Gant for Pitt. The steal by Scott. Sharif hacked him on the way up. And sure enough, the tighter zone prevents the interior passing by Pitt, something they were successful with early in his basketball game. Miami moments ago looked a little bit confused at each end of the floor, but right now they're creeping back into it, trailing by eight with Scott at the line, a chance to bring Coach Hamilton within six. That man right there made a hard decision, and that was to force Pitt to shoot the jumper. Because they were getting killed inside. And he's died a few times watching his team shoot free throws this season. One out of two that trip for Jerome Scott. He has five. It's a seven point lead for the Panthers. You know, it's a funny kind of zone. It's almost a one one three with a lot of pressure on the wings. Approaching the midway point of the first half 10 20 to play here at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Jermaine Morgan for three. Well, Jermaine Morgan 
is a good lead for a good offensive rebounder, not known to be a shooter. And if Miami's going to give anything up, that's what they wanted to give up. It's just a good shot. Jake Morton in for Jerome Scott. It's Kaiserman, Ward, Morton, Popa, and Swaby on the floor for Miami as both sides have substituted liberally to this point. Swaby shooting his trademark. That one was short. Here comes Miller. Wide open Sharif. Well short as Morton went running at him. Popa blocked another one. Swatted away the putback by Chris Gant. Kaiserman in the Popa, guarded by Morningstar. Nice pass. Swaby didn't want that three pointer. I tell you, the guy out there who's calling the plays and kind of leading Miami on the floor has been Jake Morton. He's been pointing and telling people to hold up just a little bit. Seniors got to do that. He benefited from that time on the bench as an unofficial assistant coach last year. A strong drive by Kaiserman for two. He's a former walk-on and the grandson of the legendary Harry Litwack, the former Temple basketball coach known as the wise old owl, who now resides in Miami Beach and gets to watch his grandson Jim play as he attends most of the Miami home games. See what the tightness of the zone allows Miami to do is cover the jump shooters, at least put a hand in their face and contest it. You know, they'll be vulnerable to the great shots like that one by anyone, but it's kept Pitt from really scoring inside. That shot was a little too well contested <laughs> as Miller hit it, and he was knocked to the deck. And as I said, getting Sean Miller to shoot rather than give up the ball is a difficult thing to do because he's such an unselfish player. But heck, if you can put it down like that and draw the foul, you might as well take your shots. Foul trouble for Hammy Ward as that was his third. We're at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse in Pittsburgh. Sean McDonough along with Len Elmore, happy to have you with us for the second half of our ACC Big East doubleheader. First meeting in more than 20 years between these two schools and Pitt has a 10 point lead. Sean Miller the best free throw shooter in the history of the Big East Conference just made it 11. Miller has eight. Uh oh. <laughs> We've seen Pope do it all tonight. Block shots, pass the ball very deftly and he has a nice shooting touch. He's going to the tallest point guard in the league. Kaiserman calls the play down to 25 on the shot clock. A lot of that time gets run off because the Miami guys recognize shots and maybe hesitate a little bit. Pat Lawrence has checked in for the first nice time in Miami. Nice 32. And we talked about Popa. 7-3. Seven seven looks a little bit awkward, but he's not. He really is a very clever player. And the great value of his skill is the fact that he's ambidextrous. Look at him. Look to the basket. He turned and saw the open spot, put the ball on the floor to get there, and used his left in close. Chance for the three-point play. Off the back rim, Sharif the rebound. Nine-point lead for Pitt. Gant. Now Morgan to McNeil. They're on the floor with Miller and Sharif. Morgan, another three, well short. Good job by Pope of getting out there to contest. Jerome Scott brings the Hurricanes into the front court. Seven and a half minutes to play in the half. Look at that pass by Popa. And Swaby was fouled as he took it up. Well, Popa understands what his role is at different times. That time he knew that he was the hub of the offense when the ball went inside. Watch him on the right of your screen as he receives. And the one thing I like about him, Sean, is that he looks to the basket. Okay, he looks for the cutters to the basket as well as looks for that space in which he can establish himself. O'Keel Swaby at the line. Three for eight from the line now are the Miami Hurricanes. We talk about building a system and getting guys involved in a system. Here Swaby recognizes nobody's covering him, but nobody's guarding you. That's the best place to go, to the basket. Somebody should find you. Three points for O'Keel Swaby. 
Timeout with 7.30 to play in the first half. It's Pitt by eight. When I get to work, I put on the coffee and I turn on the light. Light FM. Lots of music with less talk. We listen to Light FM. It sets just the right mood. They've added more songs for a bigger variety. You've got to try it. We forget. Light FM, a great radio station that's sounding even better. A bigger, brighter choice of music. But the mood is still light. Light FM 106.7 WLTW. Join TWA's Business Flyer Award Program and get back cash. 15% of your fare in cash every time you save your company money by flying on TWA's qualifying low business flyer fares. 15% to you in cash or in TWA reward dollars you can use like cash to purchase TWA tickets and TWA getaway vacations. For limited time free enrollment, call TWA at 1-800-892-4141. Ku, Hawaiian god of power and of war. Ku dominates a fierce clash in Hawaii between the mightiest of warriors. A rendezvous with Ku, the NFL Pro Bowl, Sunday, live on ESPN. Surprising Syracuse battles Connecticut in a key Big East clash. Then in-state rivals go at it in the Big Eight. Kansas meets Kansas State, part of a big Monday triple header, live on ESPN. DePaul and Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish, looking for their second win at home under John McLeod. Elver Bennett drives. He can't get it to go, but Alfonso Ellis with the big follow slams it down. The Fighting Irish are up and win it 74-69. Back to you. Thank you, John. One of the first tasks for John McLeod at Notre Dame was to convince LaFonso Ellis to stay in school. And I'm sure Ellis is glad he did because he has really raised his stock in the opinion of some of the NBA scouts we've talked to this year. Best decision he ever made primarily because John McLeod's system allows him to show off his great athletic skills and he's learning the game. Gant rejected by Popa. Third block in less than 13 minutes for the Romanian. And a chance for the Hurricanes to pull even closer. They trail by eight. Scott guarded by Jordan. This is Pat Lawrence, the brother of Anthony Lawrence. Popa off to Lawrence. Rebound. Popa had it momentarily. He hit the deck for it. It's Miami ball. And I'm telling you, you just got to like the way he's approaching this game. You know, not having the upper body strength, he'll still go in there and battle. And when the ball goes on the floor, how many 7-3 guys do you know of that are going to extend themselves? 7-3, they list him at 215. Coach Hamilton would like to see him at about 40 pounds. This pass that time intercepted by Miller. McNeil might have had a piece of it. Should have been a bounce pass. McNeil misses, and Jordan came over the back of Kaiserman. That's three fouls against Gandhi Jordan. So he has three and Hammy Ward of Miami with three. The players in early foul trouble. Well, Constantine Popa has changed the complexion of this game by his presence inside. At first, it looked as though it was going to be a pit runaway. Dominance in the middle. Popa comes in and cuts out all of that layup stuff on the part of Pitt. And he's really forced them to think offensively. Constantine is a freshman, but he's 20 years old and he'll turn 21 in February from Bucharest, Romania. Came over to this country last year to adjust to the American style of play. He spent a year at Fort Union Military Academy in Virginia. He missed the front end of the one and one. But Lawrence tracked it down to the corner. And a Fort Union sounds familiar to Miami sports fans. That's the same school that sent Vinny Testaverde and Stephen McGuire to the Miami football program. Hurricanes hanging in there, still down by eight as we approach six minutes left in the half. Scott, strong drive for two. Pitt right now defensively not really sending people to help, allowing Miami to take the baseline from them. Seven points for Jerome Scott. Pitt has gone cold. Morningstar hasn't been heard from since the opening minute or two. Now he scores over Pat Lawrence. Eight points for Darren Morningstar. 
Darren Morningstar being a go-to guy for Pitt right now, he's going to have to take charge as well as Chris McNeil. Foul on the drive. Miami has only committed four team fouls in this half. That's the tenth against Pitt, so every foul against the Panthers from here on in will result in a two-shot opportunity for Coach Hamilton's club. They might want to decline the fouls, though, the way they shoot the free throws. <laughs> Tell you the way they're playing on it it's a team Miami's a team that's playing with confidence and sometimes that confidence follows you up to that line and you don't shoot true to form Leonard Hamilton in his second season in Miami after four years as the head coach at Oklahoma State and as Len mentioned coach Hamilton largely responsible for the success the Cowboys are enjoying right now as he recruited much of that great talent. The third game tonight on ESPN comes away at midnight Eastern Time women's basketball from the Big West UNLV against Long Beach State. <laughs> Jerry McCullough just off the bench missed the three Antigua knocked it away but it's Swaby to Scott stolen by McCullough. That's why Jerry McCullough's in the basketball game. He's a jet on the floor, and Paul Evans doesn't like the tempo. He wants to quicken it. Miller with the arcing three that missed, and Popa pulled down another rebound. He's been the story of the first half for Miami. Miami just played Georgetown in their last outing. They lost by 20 as Alonzo Mourning had a big game. But Coach John Thompson said after the game, I would take Popa on my team in a minute. And he said after the game, I told my players they're going to see Constantine Popa in the NBA someday. Well, John Thompson should know. He had a kid who walked in that didn't seem as though he had a talent, and that was a guy by the name of Dikembe Mutombo. We all know that Mutombo is like lighting the NBA afire. Talking about the rookie of the year, perhaps, in the NBA, in Dikembe Mutombo. Neal waits to inbound as Miami makes a couple of substitutions. Anthony Lawrence and Jake Morton return. And Kaiserman went to the bench. 27-21 pit. Four and a half to play in the first half. McCullough now in the backcourt with Miller. McNeil, Antigua, and Morningstar. The front three for Paul Evans. Foul in the paint against Constantine Popa. Miami very content to stay in that zone. What they're going to have to do, though, is find a way to step in front of the passer and keep them from throwing the ball into the dead middle of the paint. Morningstar gets good position against Popa. That's a weakness Popa has, not taking a position away in the paint. Miller for three. I don't even think he saw the basket. Constantine Popa standing right in front of him. 11 points for Sean Miller, who came into tonight's action. Tied for 17th place on the all-time pit scoring list. Scott missed McNeil the rebound, and he has been more active on the boards tonight as Coach Evans wanted him to be. Morningstar called for a travel. And we get a timeout here in Pittsburgh where the Panthers have pushed their lead back to nine. It's 30 21. Hey, the rabbit can be sweet around here. What's all the racket? Hey, what's up? Chuck! I was only kidding. Gruesome, ain't it? <laughs> of course, you know, this means war. Jordan and Air Jordan. What'd you expect? my fight? Nice shot. Nice shot. This flaws them every time. <laughs> you who's <laughs> nice shots. This could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. That's all, folks. Well, that's my line. Chunky introduces another big chicken noodle soup. New classic chicken noodle made the chunky way. Big. 
gigantically juicy chunks of chicken, humongously hearty noodles, and titanic tasting vegetables. Chunks big enough for a fork, but you better use a big spoon to get every drop of robust chicken broth. New chunky classic chicken noodle, soup so big, it eats like a meal. In the Big Ten, Michigan has been down throughout much of this game, but they've just pushed it to a one-point lead over Michigan State. Mike Poplowski of the Spartans about to go to the line. Back to Sean and Lynn. Well, we talk about Constantine Popa learning this game, but he certainly has become a force in the middle. As I mentioned, he's changed the course of this game by his inside defensive play. See a nice job of waiting for the offensive player to commit himself before going after the block. Popa in 13 minutes of action to this point, four points, two rebounds, three block shots, and a steal. And as Lynn mentioned, most importantly, really changing the approach of the pit offense. Fouls on Sean Miller. That's his third personal. So two on Miller, two on Jordan. Sean's doing a good job of trying to convince Paul Evans to keep him in the basketball game. Now, Paul has got to be pretty much ambivalent. He recognizes he needs Sean out there to keep his offensive attack together, but he doesn't want to lose him. Evans not as concerned about the three fouls on both Miller and Jordan as rookie in the leagues because of the six-foul rule in the Big East. Miami six for 13 from the line and six for 14. And that is absolutely killing them as they trail by nine. McCullough lays it in, the freshman from New York City out of Rice High School. And even though you have a six-foul situation, when you have a guy like Jerry McCullough out there, you can afford to sit Sean Miller just for a little bit and keep him in the game, particularly for the second half. You don't want him to pick up his fourth. Jake Morton. And he walked. Anthony Lawrence a little bit too far from the basket that time. Doesn't really have the skills to handle the ball that far away. Seventh turnover against Miami, and Lawrence goes to the bench. Kaiserman has returned for the Hurricanes. Kaiserman, Scott, Swaby, Popa. And Pat Lawrence now on the floor for Miami. It's McCullough, Miller, and Tigua McNeil, the morning star for the Panthers. Pass was deflected into the arms of Swaby. Again, a good job by the tight Miami zone, forcing Pitt to try to throw over it, and that time the weak side was ready. Scott had it swatted by McCullough. Scott was screaming at Joe Mingle for a call, and he better be careful. He is dangerously close to a technical. Well, Jerome Scott, again, allowed to take the baseline for McCullough. I mean, he didn't have much of a choice but to swat at that. Otherwise, it's a layup. Kaiserman short with the three. Scott to Popa. He batted it to Kaiserman. 32-21 pit with 2.22 left in the first half. Trying to bounce it underneath, and Morningstar knocked down Popa. Two fouls on Darren Morningstar. Well, Darren Morningstar never does anything with a great deal of finesse. And here in battling Popa, trying to beat him to the spot. It doesn't take an awful lot of pressure to, to bring Popa down, but you see Morningstar with his left arm underneath Constantine Popa. And Popa did a nice job of uh, making sure the officials saw. So do you think? First free throw is good for Pope. He got off to a rough start in his career at Miami. First day of practice, October 15th. He suffered a partially collapsed lung. That kept him on the sidelines for a while. Then he went to Europe for two weeks to play for the Romanian national team. Came back 18 hours before the opener. So he's really just now getting into his full stride with the Hurricanes. And a foul for over the back called against Lawrence. Well, another thing about him, 
is the fact that he also had his fears about coming out here and being embarrassed, particularly with dunking. But then he kind of thought, and I'm sure it makes sense, obviously, that when you've been in Bucharest, Romania, and you've seen the tanks and the guns on the street, that's fear. This is fun. Miller's three went spinning out to McNeil, who put it back in to give the Panthers a 12-point lead, largest lead of the night for Pittsburgh. David to Lawrence and now Kaiserman. Both a good skip to Swaby. And he knocks it in. I'll tell you, Swaby, when he gets set, he's got nice form. He likes to get his feet set. You gotta make him put it on the floor. Five points for Swaby. McNeil with two more and a chance to make it three. Great recognition by the Panthers. Once again, you see Swaby out to the left, very spread out. And once you spread that Miami zone, the cutters are going to be able to fly down the lane because Popa, if he does have some defensive weaknesses, his feet aren't quick enough. He relies more on his arm span than his feet to play defense. McNeil now with five points. The foul was on Popa, his second. Substitution for Pittsburgh. Jordan returns, and Sean Miller goes to the bench. Each of those players with three fouls. 13 point lead for the Panthers with a minute 13 to play in the first half. Foul. Antigua knocked down Kaiserman, who was trying to set a screen. Coming up at the half in a minute and nine seconds, John and Jim with highlights of tonight's games between Michigan and Michigan State, St. John's and Georgetown. Great night for some great rivalries around college basketball. Scores and highlights from throughout the college basketball scene tonight. Jim Kaiserman transferred to Miami after a year and a half at Ryder. College. We mentioned his grandfather, the legendary coach Harry Litwack. I'm very envious of Jim Heisman. He is a two handicap in golf. Well, out here on the floor, he looks like one of those kind of spark plug kind of guys that'll get everybody going. He's got great enthusiasm for the game. Maybe he's trying to hurry up for tea time. <laughs> Miami is certainly a good place to be if you're trying to lower that handicap. Heisman doesn't have much room to lower it. Under a minute to play in the half. Pitt with an 11-point lead. 28 on the shot clock as McNeil got it to bounce in. Seven points for Chris McNeil, the junior from Richmond. It's about a one-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. So for all intents and purposes, Miami could hold for the last shot. Swaby in trouble. He was pressured by Brian Brush who forced the turnover. Now Pitt could hold for the last shot, but they have the numbers on the break. And the basket does not count. And a foul called. It might be against Gandhi Jordan as he collided in the lane with Lawrence. And it is against Jordan, his fourth. Well, we watched Jordan a little bit out of control, particularly in the last shot situation. Probably could have given the ball up a lot quicker. And that probably could have been a no call as well. The, if there was contact there, there wasn't a whole heck of a lot of it. Okay. Did you not agree? We probably weren't watching that aspect of it. No, I, the defender was set. And certainly, from if I'm coaching this team, I'm going to understand that, hey, could have gone either way, but it went against us, not so much because of the official's call, but because of the fact that Gandhi Jordan was doing something he probably shouldn't have been doing. How was that? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Miami would be in much better shape. They've shot 16 more free throws than the Panthers. Now 17. And they keep breaking them up. And the deficit is 13 with Pat Lawrence on the line. He's a freshman from St. Petersburg. We mentioned his brother is Anthony Lawrence, who just joined the Miami team. You know, Leonard Hamilton, I'm sure, envisions building a nice home in Carl Gables, but you have to need these kind of bricks to be the foundation of it. 
hit in all likelihood will hold for the last shot now. McCullough. They need to get started toward the bucket. McCullough off to McNeil for two at the buzzer. Nine points for Chris McNeil. Most of them late in the half. And the Panthers head to the locker room with their largest lead, 15 points. And this is one of the reasons why, when we take a look at Jerry McCullough coming up here, why Sean Miller can rest. McCullough, a pretty nifty guy in the paint. You see him with three defenders still able to snake that ball to McNeil on the trail. Halftime here at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, Pittsburgh 41 and Miami 26. Now let's head back to the studio and join John Saunders. All right, Sean Allen, thank you very much. 15-point lead for the Panthers. Miami finding out it is very tough on the road in the Big East. Stay with us. Jim Valvano and I return in a moment. Scores and highlights, including St. John's and Georgetown, Michigan, Michigan State. As if they'll win this one, 20 seconds to go. They are up by eight, 87 to 79. Right now, back to the Big East, Sean McDonough and Len Elmore. Thank you, John, here at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Problems getting the ball through the net from the free throw line. Plagued Miami in the first half. And the Hurricanes trail by 15. And another problem was inside. Len, Pittsburgh was much more effective in the paint. Well, what Pitt's doing is facing very well, and that's going to force the Miami defenders to play two people. Watch it right here. And we're going to watch Chris McNeil as well as Constantine Popa. Now, Popa has a decision to guard McNeil or Morningstar, and we notice he makes the wrong decision. McNeil had an excellent first half. He leads all scores in the game with 11 points, and he also had five rebounds, including one offensive rebound. And we mentioned the two keys, the free throws, Miami 9 of 20. They had 18 more attempts than the Panthers in the first half. And Pitt outscored Miami in the paint by eight points, and the margin is 15 for the Panthers as we get set to begin the second half. Pittsburgh much more reliant upon the three-point shot in the first half. And you see that both two-point and three-point range the Panthers shot the ball well, 57% from the floor for the half. Leonard Hamilton's team shot 42%. So Miami right now decides they're going to have to play man-to-man -to, -man to get back into this basketball game. And what they're going to have to do is really shore up the paint area. Pit 12 to 17 for two pointers. A lot of them in the paint early in this game. Foul on Constantine Popa. And that is his third. Well, what Constantine Popa has to learn about this game is that his height is such an advantage, he doesn't have to reach and deny guys if he's going to play behind them. His size alone will prevent a lot of shots. This is the largest lead for Pittsburgh, 15 points. They closed out the last five and a half minutes of the first half on a 14 to 5 run. Antigua stepped back for three and missed. McNeil tipped it too long. Morningstar stripped as he went up. And Pitt will get it out of bounds underneath the basket. And Morningstar was looking for a foul call. Take a look at those sideburns. He was just saying thank you very much. <laughs> Samar Logan has checked in for the first time for Miami, replacing O'Keel Swaby. So Miami has now used 10 players and Pitt 11. Popa with a block that came right back to Morningstar, and he scored in the second try. 10 points now for Darren Morningstar. And we have to say it again that Pitt is dominating inside the paint area, and when they do that, they're at their best, particularly Darren Morningstar. Popa had it back from Kaiserman. Nice pass. Logan foul on the floor. Samar, a junior from East Orange, New Jersey, out of Essex Catholic Boys High School. Jerry McCullough, guilty of the foul, his second. Now, you're taking a look at the building blocks of this Miami program. As time goes on, a lot of Miami players will play a lot better with Constantine Pope, but when he gets the ball, they're going to cut to the basket because they know they're going to get it back if they're open. Popa, the hook, no good. And the rebound by McNeil. 
Miller underneath the Morning Star, and the pass back to Miller, poked away by Kaiserman. Give the Hurricanes credit. One and seven in the league, six and twelve overall. Very scrappy team. We've seen them hit the ball, hit the floor regularly for loose balls. And as we said at the beginning, they're a bunch of overachievers. They don't have the go-to guy who's going to carry them or win games down the stretch, and they realize that. So they're out there scrapping with people to playing over their ability. They may have those go-to guys soon as Coach Hamilton is having an excellent recruiting year. He already has three commitments from three outstanding prospects. Recruiting is his forte. Ward didn't play much because of foul trouble in the first half. Popa bumped down the block by Morningstar. Three fouls on Darren Morningstar. Well, Darren Morningstar, the best that he can do is to force Popa further out away from the basket, and he's been doing a nice job. Watch the forearm, trying to keep Popa further away, make that jump hook a lot more difficult. 43-26 pit. That's a try for three and a good field goal from three for Jerome Scott. He now has ten. Miller foul. Leonard Hamilton is trying to get his guards particularly to apply more pressure but he doesn't want to give up anything right now he's talking to Michael Gardner telling him not to leave his man once the ball is passed but to apply pressure to Sean Miller not allow Miller to get the ball back. That was the first foul against Jerome Scott. Jermaine Morgan back into the game for the Panthers. Miller in the back row with McCullough, McNeil, Morningstar, and Morgan. Five M's on the floor for Coach Evans. That's McCullough bearing a long three from well behind the line. Five points for Jerry McCullough. And in practice, I talked to Paul Evans, and I asked him, is there going to be life after Sean Miller? And he just pointed to number five and said, that's the man. That was the man who picked up the foul. Jerry McCullough. You know, McCullough possesses, as I said, that great speed, and he's starting to learn the basketball game. His size may be somewhat of a limitation, but his speed more than makes up for it. Popo lost the ball. Morningstar batted it away. McNeil fed McCullough. Goaltended by Popo. Big fella got down there pretty quick. Oh. Another facet of his game. Look at him run the floor. Well, it's those big strides. Oh. He takes about one step for every four of McCullough. And the long pass for the slam for Logan. Pitt trying to apply a little pressure. That was a missed signal. Nobody back to really protect the basket. 48-31 Panthers. Jermaine Morgan gave it to Sean Miller. Nice pass to Morningstar. And he was fouled. Well, he took it up. And I tell you, with Sean Miller, it's the little things. When he received that ball, he just shifted the ball from side to side, and the Miami defense shifted with his movement until he found an open lane in which to pass to Darren Morningstar. Now watch him use the ball one side, now go to the other, and he finds Morningstar come up to the lane. He's got great fundamental skills, Sean Miller. I think he's probably like the perfect college point guard. He's a guy I'd love to have played with. Darren Morningstar. Morning star at the line. The foul was on Copa, his fourth, and he has gone to the bench. Morning star last year averaged just 6.8 points per game. Came into tonight as the leading scorer for the Panthers at 13.7. Some will say, well, Morning star didn't play as much, and that's true because Schroeder and Martin were here. But Morning star didn't really show signs in his opportunities to play, which were considerable. That he was going to be the kind of player he is this year. Well, he certainly worked hard over the summer. He spent all summer running with Sean Miller and another player getting in shape, losing 20 pounds. Timeout called by Miami as the Hurricanes could not get it in bounds. Miami trails by 19. Dan can run 100 meters in 10.3 seconds. Dave can high jump six feet, ten and three quarter inches. This summer, they'll battle it out in Barcelona for the title of world's greatest athlete. In many ways, it looks and feels like nothing we have ever built. 
many ways, it looks and feels like everything we've ever built. If potato chips are going to cross your lips, keep them fresh, make them fine all the time. That's Pringles, pop the Pringles. Not like chips in a bag, they don't stay fresh, it's a rag. pound shot put 53 feet 3 inches. Dave can hurl a javelin 236 feet. This summer they'll battle it out in Barcelona for the title of world's greatest athlete. According to Jeff Sagarin's computer rankings, Pitt has played the fourth toughest schedule in the country. And you look at some of the opponents they played and their rankings at the time Pitt played them. And when it comes to selection time for the NCAA tournament, and that's still a goal for the Panthers, those wins over Kentucky and Syracuse are going to be very helpful. Well, they certainly have a tough schedule ahead of them, but one of the problems they've had in the community is that once they beat Kentucky and Syracuse, people thought they were a better team than they were. And uh, now they're playing pretty much the way people expected. And they're a good team. There's no question about it. They've got to come up with some big wins, though, down the stretch. They're on another run. As Paul Evans said yesterday, we were picked in the preseason to finish eighth in the Big East. So really, we're doing what people expected. And they've lost a couple of starters as well. So doing as well as they have been with the loss of those starters means that they're having a fairly successful season. We had uh, a similar, actually much more of a blowout than this is turning out to be last night. A chance for Coach Vitale during the Indiana Purdue game to talk about a lot of different subjects. One of the subjects we did, probably the only subject we did not cover, was coaches who do not get enough credit in college basketball. And I think Paul Evans is right at the top of that list. That was Lawrence scoring for Miami. There's a guy you don't hear a lot about when the excellent coaches of college basketball are mentioned. But you look at his record everywhere he's been whether it's St. Lawrence Navy or Pitt he's been a huge winner and look at the success here at Pitt five seasons four NCAA trips three 20 win plus seasons and Paul Evans record speaks for itself and he's not the kind of guy that's going to go out and be a self promoter he's going to let his job do the talking and I know he's got great respect among those who know the game. His winning percentage at Pitt, 63 percent. He's 110 and 65 here. In six years at Navy, he was 119 and 60. And made the NCAA tournament his last two years there. And in seven years at St. Lawrence in Canton, New York, 126 and 50 was his record. His career winning percentage, 67 percent. With those three schools combined in 19 years as a head coach, Morningstar missed. And as you mentioned, the free throw woes aren't exclusively the domain of Miami Pitt the worst free throw shooting team in the league Miami was second worst coming in Panthers only at 60 percent collectively for the year as a team and big reason why they've lost three one point game 51 33 Pitt under 16 minutes to play here in Pittsburgh. This is Michael Gardner, number 12, freshman from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Swaby knocked it down. Swaby last year in high school averaged better than 47 points per game. He led the nation among all high school players in points per game. Set a Florida State record, the best single season scoring average. He had 64 in one game last year at North Miami High School against Miami Pace. Well you take a look at his stroke as this game goes further along you'll see why he scored a lot of points. That's a lot of launching that he put up there but the fact is he has to learn other aspects of the game particularly the defensive end. He's going to be a fine player as time goes on. Miller missed a wide open jumper from the corner. Scott stripped by McCullough. Gardner the defender. Gardner got a piece of it, but he also got a piece of McCullough, who will go to the line to shoot two. We talked about O'Keel Swaby. He's a freshman from Miami, and this is last year while he was at North Miami High School. And 
piling up all those points. Leading the nation at 47.4 per game, a Florida record with the high of 64 against Miami Pace. And so what? It wasn't the greatest competition that he played against, but the fact is he's got offensive instincts. He knows how to come off picks. He squares up nicely, and he's got that great touch. And as I said, seasoning and playing against better people is going to make him that much better. O'Keel was the USA Today and Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Florida last year and was second in the balloting for Mr. Basketball in the state of Florida. 51-35. Miami benefited from the McCullough free throw misses. Swaby shot as Morgan knocked down Ward. Jermaine Morgan picks up his third. Seems to be executing their half court offense a little better. They're finding the hot man, which is Swavy right now, and trying to get him the ball. The inexperience of a freshman point guard like Michael Gardner shows when you don't get the ball to that hot man. 43 year old Leonard Hamilton. 12 years as an assistant coach at Kentucky before he became the head man at Oklahoma State. Gardner just inside the sideline. And he lost it off his knee to Morgan. Not in a position to pass the ball. And that's the inexperience. McCullough almost got knocked down by his own man, Gant. Panthers lead is 15, 16 rather, 51 35. Ordinarily, you wouldn't say that's insurmountable, but Miami is anything but an explosive offensive team. Morningstar had it blocked. Tracked down by Morgan to McCullough for three in and out. And the rebound to Swaby. I was going to say, by contrast, we'll watch Sean Miller as time goes on. And he's a guy who gets in position to pass the ball. He doesn't do an awful lot with the basketball. No wasted motion. I mentioned that Sean came into the night tied for 17th place on the Pitt all-time scoring list. He was tied with Brian Generalovich, who played here at Pitt from 61 to 64. Brian's now a dentist. His son, Brock Generalovich, is Sean Miller's roommate. Sean also passed number 16, Calvin Sheffield, with two points tonight. He needed 30 tonight to move into 15th place and passed Kent Scott. Morning Star took an extra step. No basket. He was traveling. You know, I'm not so sure about that. Now, certainly, he doesn't look as smooth and as deft as a lot of other guys going down the lane. But watch him pick it up. One, two. Uh, Travel. Yeah, he took a little extra. Mm -hmm. Darren transferred to Pitt from Navy. They, I don't think they'd uh, let him get away <laughs> with that fashion statement at the Naval Academy. No, I don't think so. He can be an individualist here. Foul on the drive as Scott went toward the goal. The foul was against McCullough. And that's four fouls now. Check that. It's on Sean Miller, and that's his fourth foul. And Jerome Scott goes to the line. Leading scorer this year for the Hurricanes is Scott. Last year, he was the co-MVP for Miami, along with Joe Wiley, who graduated. First one is good. We invite you to tune to ESPN on Sunday from Honolulu. That's February 2nd, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, the Pro Bowl. The AFC against the NFC. Tough chore for Mike Patrick, Joe Thigh, and Chris Berman and company with that week in Hawaii that somehow they're getting through. Don't worry, guys. If you need even an old basketball analyst, we'd be more than willing to help you out. They deserve it. They did great work all season long on the NFL coverage, both on our Sunday night presentation and also on the studio programs. They deserve a little R&R. &R. We shouldn't make it up be completely a vacation because they are working in some football preparation amidst all the golf and hoopla in Hawaii. The foul was against okay. Lawrence. <laughs> okay. And Chris Gant is at the line. 
Chris averaged 27 points and 14 rebounds a game last year as a senior Smiley High School in Houston Texas. That gets hit off 51 points. They were stuck there for a while, but Miami couldn't capitalize. 52-37. Anthony Loris returns, and Tammy Ward goes to the bench. Rebounded by Lawrence. 17-17 to play. Kaiserman guarded by McCullough. Good pass, but it was dropped by Anthony Lawrence, and then he's called for the foul as he bumped Chris Gant. Well, Anthony Lawrence has been sitting on the bench for a pretty long period of time, and as soon as he gets in the game, he's in the post, and the ball's thrown to him. He was thinking about the type of move that he wanted to make. As you take a look at a frustrated Leonard Hamilton, he was thinking a lot more than responding, and he didn't really keep his eye on the basket, on the ball, I should say, right there. He was making his move before he even gained possession. That all comes with learning, though, and Leonard Hamilton hands uh, covering his face. He'll be able to hold his head up high very shortly. I mean, he does now, but certainly in games like this, he'll be able to recognize that this was a learning experience two years from now. Chris McNeil, Chris McNeil back in. Morningstar checks out. Gant made the first. It's a 16 point lead for Pittsburgh. They get 17. Very polite crowd here at home. They come very quiet when the Panthers are shooting free throws. It's holding the breath. <laughs> That's right. The way the Panthers have fared. Whistle by Joe Mingle as he thought Pat Lawrence was shaken up, and he was hobbling a bit, but he's going to stay in the game. Been a very well officiated game here tonight at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse in Pittsburgh. Sold out for the Hurricanes and the Panthers. Kaiserman missed. Rebound ripped down by Jermaine Morgan. Sean McDonough and Len Elmore, happy to have you with us. Don't forget midnight tonight. Women's basketball from the Big West, UNLV, and Long Beach State. Third game on ESPN this evening. Gant took an excellent pass from Miller and laid it in for the easy two. Seven points off the bench tonight for Chris Gant. Scott bumped by McCullough. McCullough was a little bit too tight for Jody Sylvester. Two fouls on McCullough. Paul Evans signed a multi-year contract extension back in October, and that's good news for Pitt Panther fans. He'll be here for a while. There's a guy who's going to be gone after this year. He seems like Sean Miller has been at Pitt forever, mm -hmm. having had the red shirt a couple of years ago because of a rare foot injury. But I think the Panthers will survive. They've got some good young talent out there, and they've, they've benefited from his experience and his uh, teaching ability. He's going to make a fine coach. I've had a chance to talk with Sean over the years, and uh, the guy knows the game. Morgan. Drove by Swaby and Fed McNeil. 56-38, Pittsburgh. Morgan's pass did not find Gant. It'll be Miami ball. Substitution for the Hurricanes as Michael Gardner returns. He replaced Jerome Scott. We talked about Sean Miller. He was a part of that heralded recruiting class of 1987. Along with Darrell Porter, Brian Shorter, Bobby Martin, Jason Matthews. That's a three. No good for Lawrence. Rebounded by Ward. And whistles stop the play. Jody Sylvester calls a treble. All five of them now, now that Miller has done it this year, scored 1,000 points in their career. 56-38 pit. We are back after this. Dan can throw a discus 172 feet. Dave can long jump 24 feet, 10 and a half inches. 
This summer, they'll battle it out in Barcelona for the title of world's greatest athlete. We respected what Phil was doing, but we weren't going to let him know that. Look, if you want to work out, lift weights. Like a normal person, huh? Ride a bicycle. Or swim. Yeah, go bowling or do something. Something safe. Just be there, all right? <laughs> One beer has the taste as genuine as the people who drink it. Budweiser. That was cool. Yeah, that was great. That was crazy. <laughs> Things are different. The all-new Grand Am Sports Sedan proves it. Things are better. Because inside and out, the Grand Am's equipped to perform. And it even gives you better mileage than a Cord or Camry for a whole lot less. In fact, Consumers Digest named the Grand Am a Best Buy. Pontiac's new Grand Am. A new kind of excitement. Dan won the decathlon at the World Track and Field Championships. Dave won the decathlon at the Goodwill Games. This summer, they'll battle it out in Barcelona for the title of world's greatest athlete. Another overtime contest, this one at Vanderbilt. Memphis State, Tony Madlock drives in, gets rejected here, but the ball comes right back to him. He sticks it back, and they win it in overtime by two on the road. After Sean Elias. Thank you, John. Sean Miller continues to climb up the Big East ladder in many categories, including assists. Well, he draws so much attention, I said, to watch the contrast from the inexperienced Miami point guard to a veteran like Sean Miller. He likes to look people off and just get the ball to the people who are open. 649 career assists, including four tonight. 331 of those career assists in the Big East. He's going to add to that total. He would have had Gant been able to convert. Sean Miller with those 331 assists, third all time in the Big East in career assists, trailing only Sherman Douglas of Syracuse and Mark Jackson of St. John's, both of whom obviously have gone on to the NBA. Sean needs just 12 more to pass Mark Jackson and move into second place. He'd need 96. Probably a bit too much work to do with the time remaining this season to catch Sherman Douglas. Well, the thing that catches your eye about Miller's game is the fact that he doesn't turn the ball over very much. Now, he turned it over six times in the last game against Arizona, but that's so uncharacteristic. He's a guy that's got a, an assist turnover ratio of like 2.6 to 1, and that's pretty darn good. Those are the numbers. Darrell Porter, Miller's former teammate, one of the members of that Herald and recruiting class of 1987 that I mentioned, fifth all time in the Big East in assist. Popa comes back in with his four fouls with 11.26 to play. And with the Hurricanes trailing by 20, an exasperated Anthony Lawrence back on the bench. Glad you mentioned Arizona because we talked at the outset about Pitt on a little bit of a slump coming into this game, having lost four in a row. They've played a very tough schedule lately. Those four losses at Connecticut, at Syracuse, Georgetown at home, and at Arizona. Nearly a five-second count, but Ward got rid of it to Michael Gardner. Down to 15 on the shot clock. Gardner open. His shot well off. McNeil batted it to Miller. It's three on one for the Panthers at the moment. McCullough back to Gant. Too strong off the glass. Miller has it back. Didn't get the roll. And the rebound came down to Hammy Ward. Kaiserman for three. Barely scraped the front rim. Great hustle to get it back and lay it in. Beauty of playing college basketball. Kaiserman recognizing this is his, pretty much his last year. He's going to make the most of it, have some memories to, to pull out on the 19th hole. <laughs> he has eight. 58-40, Panthers midway through the second half. Miller, a long three. Got just a piece of the backboard, no rim. Logan for three. 
rebounded by Gant. Up and down they go now. McCullough to Morgan. He missed. And we're, we're sitting pretty close to the Miami bench. And what's going on? You can still hear Leonard Hamilton screaming out direction. Just because his team is down by 18 points, it doesn't look like they're going to come back. He's still out there coaching because he's got a job to do for the future. Hova missed a left-handed hook. And it's still 58-40 Panthers with 9.20 to play. McNeil open at the foul line. 13 points for Chris McNeil. You know, this is a time when Leonard Hamilton can look for some things in his player. And unfortunately, he's had that opportunity many times this year. But he's looking for progress. And obviously, he's not looking for perfection, but he wants to see if his guys are learning. Kaiserman missed. And a foul on the rebound against Amy Ward. Two, three on His fourth. Ward was the first Hurricane to take advantage of the six foul rule in the Big East. As he fouled out with 45 seconds left in their game against Seton Hall. Coming up at midnight Eastern time. Women's basketball from the Big West as UNLV takes on Long Beach State. That wraps up our triple header of NCAA basketball tonight. Dan had it go in and out. Speaking of women's basketball, I just have to take the chance. And oh, I know what's coming. To congratulate uh, women's coach Chris Weller at the University of Maryland, having her team being number one. I've known Chris for a long time, and she's always done a great job. And certainly, she deserves to have her team at that point uh, being number one. Great coach. Well, they're still going to send you the mailer and expect you to contribute some money to the alumni fund. But that was a very nice plug for your alma mater. And deservedly so. Chris Weller has done a great job. Recognized today in a nice article in USA Today. Ward had it batted out of bounds, but after McNeil got a piece of it, it struck Ward, and it's Pitt's ball. Well, what's difficult for Miami right now is to stay focused on the game, stay focused on trying to learn and get better. It's very hard when you're down just about every game. You kind of get frustrated and you forget why you're out here. I think you're right about Jerry McCullough getting ready to take the place of Sean Miller and run the show for the Panthers. What a great bounce pass underneath. Jerry McCullough is a slick basketball player from New York City. There's been kind of a resurgence, particularly with Pitt, in, in going after New York City players, and I'm glad to see that, having been one old 20-some-odd years ago. But you see McCullough's got a lot of savvy, certainly has a, a flair for the game, and he may bring a different style, albeit just as successful as Sean Miller as the years go on, just a freshman. Hoba goes to the bench as he has picked up his fifth personal. Chris McNeil out of Oak Hill Academy in mouth of Wilson, Virginia, the same school that sent Brian Shorter and Gandhi Jordan to Pitt. That school has sent many others to outstanding college basketball programs around the country. 63-40 in favor of the Panthers, and McNeil has 15 points and eight rebounds tonight. And against Arizona, he shot two for 11 and had Paul Evans worried whether or not his game had stayed in the South. But this is a good way to revive that game, and he's doing a great job. Just came down with his ninth for rebound. Neal averaging 9.8 rebounds per game for the season, but only six rebounds a game since the Panthers started into the Big East schedule. Orlando Antigua. Guarded by Swaby. McNeil launches a three that's short. Foul on the rebound. Action underneath. It's going against Miami. It's against Jake Morton, his first. And just going back to Chris McNeil for a second. He's been having problems with that jump shot, and I think he's relied on it too much. He's a much uh, more mobile player that can move and flash into the post, and those easy shots, the close shots, are the ones that can give you your confidence for your jumper because you make them, you have a high percentage, and you're not worried about missing. Right now, Chris McNeil is thinking about that jumper, and it's not going to come back to him. 
Rondy Jordan, the shooter, he missed the first. He has three points tonight. He missed a pair. These two teams are going to solidify their standing as the bottom two teams in the Big East in free throw percentage. Swaby had it bounce out. Jordan fed McCullough with Antigua. Jerry had it bounce out himself. Back to Antigua. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, Jerry McCullough thought he was going to dunk that. He had his eye right on the lip of that rim. He wanted to throw it down. He was up there at 5'11". Took it into traffic that time, then fed McNeil. Count the basket. He'll go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. So that's what I'm talking about. Chris McNeil makes a bunch of those. Then he's going to come back and shoot the jump shot in a much more relaxed fashion. But you got to move to get some of these. And that's what Paul Evans wanted out of Chris McNeil. And you see right here, he's active, getting himself open and then doing something when he receives. Take another look at it. McCullough with a great penetration. Got himself in a little trouble, but McNeil there to bail him out and then doing something with it when he puts it on the floor. Chris has bettered his season average in points. He bettered the second leading scorer for the Panthers at 13.3 a game. He has 18 tonight. Pitt has a 26 point lead with 7.15 to play here in Pittsburgh. Get ready to rock and bowl. Your Suffolk County Bowling Centers crank up the music this weekend. Bring your friends, bring your mate or favorite date, and bowl through the night to your favorite tunes. There's nothing else like rock and bowl this weekend. Call your local Suffolk County Bowling Centers for details. We'll crank up your favorite tunes and rock into the night. It's fast, it's fun, and best of all, it's affordable. There's nothing like rock and bowl this weekend. It's hot. A few hours after they told me, I realized that a promotion doesn't just change your office, it changes your life. That's right. I knew it was time to call Tom, my nationwide insurance agent. Barbara needed a nationwide care review. We talked about her coverages, updated them, even consolidated a few policies. Oh, Tom had some great ideas. He even saved me some money. That's what I'm here for. That's good to know. The care review from Nationwide, because things change. Nationwide is on your side. Here's your chance to be on ESPN's Body Shaving at an exotic location like this. Or win a selection of body shaving products designed to keep you in shape. And the grand prize is a trip for two to beautiful Jamaica and an appearance on Body Shaping. Call 1-900-786-2333. 95 cents per call. Callers under 18 need parents' permission or send your name, age, and phone number on a postcard to this address. And, and watch, watch Body Shaping twice each weekday on ESPN. ESPN. Well, in keeping with our theme at the start of the telecast, why don't you handle that one? <laughs> you do that so well. What? Miami wins on ESPN? Not. <laughs> I'm learning. I got some young nieces and nephews. Uh -huh. My, my 18-month-old will be saying not. not to daddy soon. I better watch that. Great student section here. Give them credit. School night, late start, televised game, but they packed the Gerald Fieldhouse tonight with their team in the midst of a four game losing streak. Another run for the Panthers. 11 point edge over the last 220. Ward had it blocked by McNeil and he saved it. Swaby, well short. One of four players went after the ball. The foul's called. I believe against Darren Morningstar. Wrong again. It's against O'Keel Swaby of Miami. That's one of the things of Swaby's game. One of the aspects of his game that he's certainly going to have to work on. You put it on the floor. Don't settle for the jump shot. He's got the quickness to be able to take it all the way to the basket, draw some fouls. Hey, Ryan. Here we go. Copa with some medical attention. We mentioned earlier the uh, collapsed lung, but he's also been bothered by a sore back over the last couple of days. In the kidney area, Leonard Hamilton told me today that he was complaining about having a, a soreness there. And at beginning, right before this game, Leonard was wondering whether or not he'd be ready to play. Well, he was ready to play today. He didn't get a great deal of help. But um, that's one of the problems. He's got to build up that frame, because guys like this will be banging on him throughout his Big East uh, 
career. And he's going to have to withstand that. Point lead for Pittsburgh. This is Michael Gardner. He is the nephew of Dickie Garrett, who started Southern Illinois with Walt Frazier, played in the NBA with the Lakers, the Knicks, the Bucks, and the Buffalo Braves. Dick Garrett was a heck of a guard, but he'd always be known as the other guard on that uh, 69 NIT championship team. Just as Tom McMillan will kind of always be remembered as that other guy in Maryland. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Not. <laughs> 6 23 to play. And Morningstar back at the line. I'm going to update the collective free throw numbers for you for these two teams tonight. Pitt now 15 of 24. And Miami 12 for 24. Panthers just slightly ahead of their season average of 60% from the line at 63%. Miami 50%. Jordan drops it in for two more. And the lead is 30. Five points for Gandhi Jordan, the sophomore from Anstead, West Virginia. And Miami calls timeout. This is a good timeout by Leonard Hamilton because this team is not focusing. That inbounds pass by Ward, he just wasn't thinking about the basketball game. Now's the time for him to give them a pep talk and say he's got time to play. 6.07 to play. Hit 70, Miami 40. Dave doesn't know about this, but Reebok gave me this top secret running shoe. It's called the Pump Graphlite. This arch design makes them very light, supportive, and I have the only pair in existence. They won't be available to the public until spring, but I get special treatment because Reebok really wants me to win in Barcelona. <laughs> to be settled in Barcelona. Why is it so busy at McDonald's? It's such a good deal right now. We have uh, 59 cent hamburgers, 69 cent cheeseburgers. Price is low, it tastes great. Can't beat it. You name it, we got it. People love us. Check out the prices. How much is a cheeseburger this week at McDonald's? 69 cents. And next week? 69 cents. How much does a 59 cent hamburger cost? 59 cents. Are you sure? Yeah, you just said it. Come on down and see us. Prices are great and the food's great. You can't beat that. Is there more pressure being in a commercial or working at McDonald's? Being in a commercial. <laughs> Things are different. The all-new Pontiac Grand Am proves it. Things are better because no import at its price can match the power of its 16-valve engine and the control of its standard anti-lock brakes. Not a cord, not Camry, no one. In fact, Consumer's Digest named the Grand Am a Best Buy. Pontiac's new Grand Am, a new kind of excitement. These are the up-to-date standings in the Big East, reflecting Georgetown's win early tonight over St. John's. They keep pace with first-place Connecticut. Pittsburgh in the middle of the pack at the moment with a record of 3-3, three and three, but about to go to 4-3. and three. And Miami will remain in the cellar with just the one win. Providence with two wins in a row after starting out 0-6 in the Big East. Under six minutes to play. Largest lead of the night enjoyed by Pittsburgh at the moment. 30 points. We talk about Pittsburgh in the standings. You take a look at their schedule. You recognize they've only got four more home games after this. Four out of 11. And so you talk about playing a tough schedule. They've got a tough road to hold right now. And that's why wins like this are absolutely essential. We talked earlier about their goal of making it back to the NCAA tournament. This will be their 12th win. Certainly they're approaching the number of wins that would get you consideration. But they do have a very tough remaining schedule. Mostly on the road as Len mentioned the next three in fact. Away from home Providence Miami and Boston College. They still have to go to Seton Hall to St. John's to Villanova. And the home games are no bargain either. Swaby guarded by Antigua. He nearly threw it away, but Scott tracked it down. Jerome Scott, the all-time leading scorer at South Lakes High School in Virginia. He broke all the records set by Michael Jackson, who had 
such a great career at Georgetown and went on to the NBA. One, one. Fresh 45 for Miami. Five seconds to call. Scott couldn't get it in. Too bad because Logan had broken three underneath the basket, but it was too late for Coach Hamilton. And that's one of the things that Miami certainly has to work on execution, setting picks to free people. They've had difficulty all night doing that. The word around the Big East, the, a lot of coaches weren't too happy. Swaby picked up the foul. To see Miami come in to the league as a basketball participant because you look at Miami, what it has to offer. It's an excellent school. And, that climate, of course, uh, is very attractive. The, they're really trying to do in basketball what they did in football. And that is go from the bottom of the barrel in college football to the absolute top. And with a great recruiter like Hamilton, a nice arena, new arena in downtown Miami, and all that they have to offer there, you have to think they're going to get some players. Well, certainly Leonard Hamilton knows talent when he sees it. As we mentioned at the beginning of the telecast, you know, you look at the assemblage of players at Oklahoma State. You know, he went out there and got those guys and really got them started, went through some lean years with them, and unfortunately hasn't seen the culmination of his efforts, but certainly he's proud of them. And he firmly believes that with all the attributes of the Miami area that you mentioned, that he's going to be a power in that conference in a couple of years. And yes, the other schools are going to have to say, well, wait a second. You know, that's going to be pretty unfair. Two points for Brian Brush, a walk-on junior from Sharpsville, PA. And the lead is 30 for the Panthers. Leonard Hamilton has already started to see some interest from the student body at the University of Miami and in the community. After the big win over St. John's, they had 10,000 fans for their next home game. And if they could sustain winning, he thinks they'd have that kind of crowd regularly. Well, you know, everybody loves a winner, and I guess the Miami fans looking at the Dolphins down there in Miami football, they really love winners. Yes, indeed. They're going to show up. And I think that's a good example of two teams that really don't draw when they weren't winning big. The Dolphins, when they're on top, they draw when they're so-so. They really don't fill Joe Robbie Stadium, and the same was true of Miami football. But I think having basketball down there in such a competitive conference as the Big East is going to educate a lot of the non-basketball believers down there, and they'll come for the excitement of the league. McNeil with two more, and he was fouled underneath the bucket by Pat Lawrence. Five fouls on Lawrence. NCAA basketball tomorrow night. Number one Duke with a tough chore down in Tallahassee against Pat Kennedy's talented Seminole club that already beat North Carolina. Neil missed the shot for the three point play. And that Duke Florida State game is followed by Southern Mississippi against Tulane, the Posse and Company at 9 30 from New Orleans. Let Duke pressure has no peer, but I'll tell you, Florida State's got a couple of guards who are capable of handling it, provided they get some help from their small forward. That's going to be a good one. Brush off the backboard and too strong. McNeil too strong as well. And the rebound controlled by Logan. Duke really hasn't even had a competitive game in a while. I think that'll be a very competitive game tomorrow night. Scott scores for Miami. 74-44 our score. Pitt on top. Jerome Scott with 15 points for the Hurricanes. We're down to 320 to play. I tell you, the thing that impresses me, and, that, and we'll get off the subject of the number one team, but what impresses me and people should watch for is that team chemistry of the Blue Devils. I mean, they really like each other. They really sacrifice for each other. And, you know, that's that's part of being a champion. Brush scores. We talk about the difficulty of champions repeating, and one of the first things that, that pointed to was the lack of intensity, the lack of hunger to get back there. We saw Duke annihilate NC State a couple of weeks ago and there was plenty of hunger and intensity on the part of the Blue Devil. Well it's a different team. They think about it as winning it rather than defending it because they're different. Miami calls timeout with 255 to play. Things are different. The all new Pontiac Grand Am proves it. Things are better because this Grand Am gives you a more powerful 16-valve engine standard than either Accord or Camry. 
they charge thousands more for this much power. In fact, Consumer's Digest named the Grand Am a Best Buy. Pontiac's new Grand Am, a new kind of excitement. Your kids love the pizza party, but your stomach doesn't love the pizza. When what you eat and drink gives you a surprise, you want a medicine that works on your stomach itself. Pepto-Bismol. As it coats, Pepto delivers powerful medicine directly to your stomach, right where you hurt. The real medicine for your stomach. Pepto-Bismol is the only one you need. Coming up following this game, Sports Center with Chris Fowler and Bob Lee. They'll have the highlights of the showdown in East Lansing tonight, the overtime game between Michigan and Michigan State. The jury has finally been selected in the Mike Tyson trial. And opening arguments begin tomorrow. Charlie Steiner in Indianapolis with a report. And a profile of Grand Hill, Duke's other star. A piece on the often overlooked star of the Duke Blue Devils. And we'll see Duke tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern time. Here on ESPN against Florida State. Miami has shot just 27% from the floor here in the second half. Seven for 26. Fouls and Chris Gant, his second. And Pittsburgh right at 76 points at the moment. That's their average. They are the second highest scoring team in the Big East, trailing only Connecticut. Take a look at Miami being at the bottom, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that they don't have, you know, a premier scorer. Jerome Scott does as well as he can, but he doesn't get a lot of help. And sooner or later, when Miami gets a big guy in the middle, moving, playing well, passing the ball, and they get a couple of uh, players who are going to be able to put the ball in the basket down the stretch in close games. Look out. It has gotten noticeably colder in the building, and that is because the doors are open as the mass exodus continues with the wind comfortably in hand for Pitt. Swaby missed the shot, and on the end line was Chris Gant. I thought it might have been the pit guys jetting back and forth. Oh, Miami, past the game, Both sides emptying the bench now. Paul Evans has Jerry McCullough on the floor in the backcourt with Travis Ziegler, number 23, Brian Brush, Jermaine Morgan, and Chris Gant. This is Samar Logan out there with Swaby, Lawrence, Gardner, and Scott. And the call is against Chris Gant. His third. His third first goal, 10, 15, You have to be impressed by Pitt with their performance tonight. Needed this win, ending the four-game losing streak. And we showed the tough schedule, but balanced team, outside scoring threats, inside presence with McNeil and Morningstar, particularly now if McNeil is back on his game. They can play with anybody in this week. Well, Paul Evans' concerns were pretty much had pretty much dissipated when his team got on the floor because the motion in the paint McNeil and Morningstar are doing a great job of flashing to the ball moving without it and they got a lot of production from both of those guys and the spacing he's got them some wide open jump shots some great assists because they weren't so close together where one guy could guard two very easily they spread it out and forced Miami to make some decisions and certainly Pitt made the right decisions on their passing. McNeil and Morningstar tonight combined as the air ball goes up by Pat Lawrence. They combined tonight to McNeil and Morningstar for 35 points and 18 rebounds. Gant lays it in. McNeil had 20 points and 10 rebounds, and Morningstar with 15 and 8. And there is Chris McNeil. Still thinking about that jump shot, I bet. <laughs> you better start working and continue to work on flashing to the post because he's very effective. Swaby with the rebound and the putback of the miss by Scott. Okiel Swaby has 11 tonight. Down to a minute 19 to play. The lead again 30 for Pittsburgh at 78 48. Tammy Ward returns, as does Jake Morton. Swaby goes to the bench. Along with Pat Lawrence. This is Morton. Michael 
Gardner, a long three. Rush lets it go out of bounds, pit ball. Travis Ziegler, junior from Louisville. Hasn't played much over his three years at Pitt. He gave it to McCullough. Double team to the backboard, and McCullough was fouled by Jerome Scott. Second foul on Scott. He was trying for a steal. He came in as the team leader in steals with 44. And needed just one steal tonight to break the all-time steal record at the University of Miami. He was tied for the all-time lead in steals with 154 with Kevin Presto. Who played for Miami. 86 through 89. We'll check to see if Jerome Scott has a steal tonight. Well, Sean, we talked about Miami and their future, but Pitt's got a future of their own. They've gone out, as I mentioned, and gotten some good players in their freshman class, Jerry McCullough, Orlando Antigua. And, and Orlando Antigua is the kind of guy that Paul Evans told us that uh, he's such a dynamic individual, hardworking, enthusiastic. He's the kind of guy he would have given a scholarship to whether or not he could have played basketball. And I think that's a tribute to the kind of kids that uh, Paul Evans is bringing into his program. That's high praise, especially when you think of the quality of student athlete that goes to St. Lawrence University, a great school in Canton, New York, to the Naval Academy, the kind of people that they attract. And here at Pitt, he's had some wonderful human beings. So that's a lot of competition for that honor, and it says a lot about Orlando and team. By the way, Jerome Scott did have two assists, uh, two steals rather tonight, so he is all alone now as the all-time leader in steals at the University of Miami. You know, all the stories we talked about uh, about these kids. The other thing Paul Evans says when he talks about his players from the city so much for all the, the bad mouthing of kids from the inner city because there are a lot of great stories out there and people need to know about it. Including Len Elmore. Nice block by Logan as Brush took it to the goal. Jake Morton for three. Well, short. Kaiserman still hustling, as is Morton. Gardner for two. That's a two-point field goal for Michael Gardner. It's 80 to 52. Pitt with 15 seconds left. All alone, Jermaine Morgan missed the layup. Brush battles for it and scores. Six points for Brian Brush, and that will do it. Paul Evans of the Pitt Panthers break their four-game losing streak with an 82-52 win over the Miami Hurricanes. For Len Elmore, Sean McDonough saying so long from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Stay tuned for Sports Center. ESPN's NCAA Basketball is brought to you by ESPN Home Video, producers and distributors of Dick Vitale's College Hoop Superstars. Available at video and retail stores nationwide. And by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We build excitement. One seventy-three. You made the point earlier, Mike, about the hole, the start of the second half. That's the difference in the game right now. Exactly. And I'm one. I really don't think, in all cases, the start of the game, the end of the first half, the start of the second half, and the end of the game are the critical points. I think, depending on the game, there are other critical points. Although those certainly can be major points, but not always. I mean, it's not just a hard, fast rule that those segments of the game are the most critical. Trent Forbes goes to the hoop. Michael Smith, appropriately enough, gets two more. He's got 25 now. Sprawling finds Malik Seeley. 34 for Malik. 85-75. Brent Forbes pulls up, misses a three, tracked down by Michael Smith. He tries one. Phelps unable to handle it out of bounds. 
and with one second left, the St. John's Redmen have got the win they wanted here. Comes in to Seeley. He lets it fly from half court. And the Redmen of St. John's up their record to four and two. And Rick Barnes club goes to 0-5 and, and continues, as you say, to be haunted by those stretches. Critical junctures where they can't quite get it over the hump. Along with Clark Kellogg, this is Mike Gorman. Once again, the final score is St. John's 85 and Providence 75. The preceding a Big East Conference Television Network production. Drink Snap-On, the awesome, great-tasting, 100% natural sports drink from Snap-On. Snap-On, America's thirst quencher, made from the best stuff on earth. They named her Lucky Lady. But it'll take sweat, not luck, to get her flying again. And you need a deodorant you can depend on. Old Spice deodorant actually helps stop odor before it starts by killing odor-causing bacteria on contact. 99%. That's odor prevention you can count on with the clean scent of Old Spice. Could I tear you away from your lady friend? Old Spice deodorant. It does a number on odor-causing bacteria, 99%. Nick fans, guess the total number of points the Knicks will score during the month of February, and you could win the grand prize of a year's supply of Carvel ice cream and 1992-93 season tickets to the New York Knicks in Carvel's Take Your Best Shot sweepstakes. Other prizes include Carvel ice cream cakes and tickets to an upcoming Knicks game. To enter, stop by your local Carvel ice cream bakery and look for the special Take Your Best Shot display. Enter today. Thanks for watching Madison Square Garden Network, the leader in New York sports television with the finest coverage and greatest mix of year-round sports excitement featuring New York's traditional favorites, the Knicks, the Rangers, and the Yankees. MSG Network, the best in the game.